Let me ask you this. Did you know that 23 hectares of land are lost to desertification every single minute? That's an area the size of 193 football fields that are going to turn into lifeless dust just while you sit here and listen to me talk today. What's alarming about this is that we've destroyed two-thirds of our planet, and we're currently destroying 70% of the last one-third of our planet. And the good news is that this damage can be reversed. And I'm excited to share how we can transform these dying and dead ecosystems into thriving, stable, planet-supporting climates. Growing up in a family committed to environmental issues, I witnessed the spread of deserts in Rhodesia, in South Africa, and then in New Mexico when I came here as a high school student. Uh, my father explained in 2013 that desertification is just a fancy word for land that is turning to deserts. And I believe the greatest threat we face are rising population and expanding deserts. The graphs are just going the wrong way. And so for the last 40 years, this is what I've been working on. And the reason that land turns to desert is due to how humans make decisions. Our decisions are made one at a time. And without thinking of the unintended consequences, we end up with desert. What we need is we need a holistic context within which to make our decisions. Um, and we need to collect, connect our quality of life to how we want our society to be, how our finances need to be to support that quality of life, and then the environment, what do we need, what environment do we need 500 years into the future to allow our great-grandchildren to be living the same quality of life. Now, I caught this fish that, in a river that no longer reaches the ocean, and if we don't have this context, we catch all the fish out of the rivers, we cut or burn all the forest down to smoke the fish, we trap and kill all the bison and the mammoths, leaving the land to die from overresting it and breaking the carbon cycle, and we burn all the grasslands and forests, and we plow up all the soil to plant monocultures, killing all biodiversity and life including soil life, in our quest to simplify life to match our linear decision-making framework. And remember that lovely trout I caught? Its river used to flow into this dry, dead lake. We humans did this. So let's dive into real-world examples where we've seen the deserts reversed. One of the most inspiring is the Lost Plateau in China. It was once a barren landscape where rainfall simply ran off, flooded off, or evaporated from the cracked ground, leading to floods and erosion. The people could barely grow enough food to survive, and in the 1990s, the Chinese government began a massive restoration program and project. They planted grasses, they used terracing to slow the water down, they planted fruit trees, and they turned the desertified landscape into one of the most productive agricultural zones in China and over 35,000 square kilometers have been healed. And just to put that in perspective, that's a piece of land about the size of the Netherlands has been restored. Grain output has quadrupled and millions of people were lifted out of poverty because of a functioning solar dollar economy. The success of the Lost Plateau proves that large scale restoration isn't just possible, it's profitable and sustainable. Now, what if we could apply these same mindsets to the deserts of the world, including here in the United States? A common question I get asked is, how much will it cost? But I'm going to ask the reverse of that. How much will it cost if we don't act? Seriously. Let's take a look at the data. Desertification costs the global economy now $490 billion per year lost in agricultural productivity, and higher food prices. By 2050, it's estimated that over 135 million, that's half America's population, people could be displaced, added to a further 2 billion who've been born during this period of time. And these people will all need to be fed. Wars are always fought over diminishing resources. 
So to stop wars, let's turn deserts back into productive areas. <laughs> Reversing deserts is not only affordable, it's profitable. The restoration of degraded lands can provide up to $30 of economic benefits for every dollar invested. That's a 3,000% return on investment. Now, how many businesses or governments can turn down that kind of opportunity? And the best thing is, it's in solar dollars. They're the only sustainable dollar form that grows exponentially. So how do we make this happen? I discovered a really shitty solution to the problem. <laughs> and the key to restoring deserts is the biocarpet. And let me explain why the shitty uh, idea is so powerful. In deserts, the sun's ultraviolet UV light is the primary reason why life struggles to return. UV rays sterilize the soil, killing essential microorganisms, and the heat burns away any moisture before plants' seeds can germinate and take root. The biocarpet is an organic mat made of neat dung, urine, and hoof massaging, mixing sand and organic matter, and then covering and protecting the sand to allow soil a complex living organism. We need to understand that to grow. And the biocarpet serves several functions to jumpstart the life cycle in deserts. The biocarpet prom promotes plant growth by protecting the soil and trapping moisture in a warm, dark environment, fostering a mycelial network um, which aids in communication and nutrient sharing and transfer. And as plants grow, they release carbon energy to support soil life and provide shade, which cools the soil and encourages further growth. This cover can store up to 80% more of the precipitation's moisture or the rainfall's moisture which is crucial for maintaining the micro water cycle. And the micro water cycle in a desert ecosystem is the vital part that we as humans have never understood. And when we can fix the micro water cycle, this then has an outward rippling effect and we then support the small water cycle and the large water cycle. Now, in the United States alone, the USDA has told us that there are 81 million acres of desert. Okay? Let's imagine if we applied the biocarpet method to just a fraction of that land. Within a decade, we could see massive environmental and economic benefits. The land near the megacities of Los Angeles and um, Albuquerque and Salt Lake and El Paso are all ideal locations to start projects like this. We could prevent and reverse the spread of desertification, create thriving ecosystems, store vast amounts of carbon and water in the soil, reducing dust storms and reduce asthma suffered by millions of people living with dust while producing significantly more food for people and wildlife. The challenge to produce enough food will be greater over the next 50 years than basically all of recorded history, but at least the last 500 years. So that's hard to come by in deserts. So here's an opportunity to do good and make money while saving ourselves from catastrophe. Now, I know what you're thinking. Aren't livestock a major cause of environmental degradation? I mean, that's what we've all heard. But when managed holistically, livestock can become one of the most powerful tools for land restoration. The biocarpet builds on this idea by understanding how holes function, and then using livestock create, to create a protective mat that jumpstarts life, where there is no chance of protection from UV light because of previous management decisions. And imagine vast herds of neats moving across the deserts, leaving behind fertile soil, and growing plants. It's not just a dream, it's happening. And it can happen on a much larger scale. Can we repurpose harmful feedlots into beneficial deserts to grasslands biocarpet producers? 
Our financial models support this move, and having carbon sequestration as well as land valuation and healthy grass-finished meat production revenue streams also add to the potential profitability. With happy, healthy families, by the way, that was six weeks after the start, and with this type of wealth, how will our families live, our income, and our climate differ? So we know how to do this, so we know what we need to do. We need tech solutions like moving shade and mist for animals comfort from the 130 degrees uh, air temperature or the 177 degree sand temperatures. We need laying boxes and roosts for vital hens because chickens are a vital part of it to keep the neats clean and remove maggots and worms. Um, and we need uh, affordable virtual ear tag uh, fencing. Basically, we have a role for tech in our quest to assisting life to reestablish in hot deserts. But tech is not the solution. And I want you to imagine a future where deserts are no longer places of death, but places of life and abundance. Imagine a world where barren land has been transformed into green pastures, where rivers flow once again for trout to live and where communities thrive on the land that once couldn't support them. The unstoppable cycle of spreading deserts for the last 12,000 years finally has a solution. We're at a critical juncture where the choices we make will determine our collective future of our planet. Will we take bold steps to regenerate our desert land, feeding people well into the future, and leave a legacy of renewal for future generations? I'm here to tell you that we have a plan to transform 20 million acres of pure desert back into healthy, functioning savanna grasslands right here in America in the next two decades, and even more internationally. It's ambitious, but it's achievable. 600,000 NEATs can heal 150,000 acres of desert in a single year, while sequ sequestering a gigaton of carbon and generate significant profits. And the world we leave behind will be richer, greener, and more sustainable because of it. Thank you. How did we do, Rusty?